Hello YouTube, XCity here. Today we are solving Heist from PG Practice. Heist is a really cool Windows machine that involves stealing a hash, reading a GMSA password and exploiting the SE restore privilege. So we start by looking at the port scan and can see that this is a domain controller. We have Kerberos here, um, we have SMB, a couple of default Windows ports, there's RDP, here we can see the domain heist.offsec. Um, what else? There's a website here, um, which is run by Python, so that is probably interesting. And that's it. So let's have a look at this website. Okay, here we got some kind of browser where we can enter some URL. Uh, I don't know, let's enter something here. It's telling us it can't connect. Um, so let's see if it can connect to our box. And this seems to be the case, we get a hit here, so it can connect to our box, but there aren't any interesting um, headers here, right? So now we basically have um, two options. We could either um, somehow try to get a credential from this um, SSRF that we basically have here, or we could try to include local files. Um, including local files will not work, so we are not going to show that here, but um, we can solicit this client to actually call out to us with credentials. And one way to do this is via Responder. So we just start Responder on our VPN interface here. And now we try to do this SSRF again. Actually, let's um, use the default port for web here. Otherwise, we have to change the Responder config. Here we go. So why has this worked? Why did we get a hash now? Um, I will show you in a second. Um, first, let me copy this hash here. Now let's rerun this and start Wireshark. Okay, I'm just going to refresh that here. And now let's see what's happening here in Wireshark. We get the request and Responder is answering with um, authenticate NTLM. So it's basically telling the client that it should authenticate with NTLM. And since the client is configured in a way that it sends credentials automatically, which is uh, not default, um, it tries to start the whole negotiation process. And this is the way we get this hash here. Okay, with that out of the way, let's um, save the hash. And then we're going to crack it. So I'm just going to run John here. And this J is just an alias for uh, John with rocky.txt. And we get the password here for a user called Enox, which is California. So now we can try to connect to this box with this user. And one thing I always like to check is if WinRM is possible, because that's an easy win. Let's try that. And here indeed, this is the case. So let's see if there's a flag already here. And we got local.txt. So the one thing I always do is I run this privas script by itman. So let's upload that. Then we're going to run it with the extended parameter to do all the checks. Nothing interesting here yet. Well, there's one thing. Um, we can see that in this heist domain, we are in the web admins group. So this might be interesting later on. But we don't have any special privileges. No service is too interesting here. Actually, there's an unquoted service path here. But um, this is nothing we can exploit because we won't be able to um, create a file in the root of the file system. So it is an unquoted service path uh, vulnerability, but since the space is here at the beginning, we can't really do much. So in the end, the script wasn't able to find anything too interesting for us. But we saw this domain group, so it's probably worth it to run Bloodhound here. So let's upload the Sharphound in Jester. And now we can just run it like that um, with um, collection methods all. So we get all the results and 
the only thing it doesn't run with all is GPU local groups, so we are going to add that one as well. It's already done. Um, let's see what file it created. Let's download that. Oh, that should be here now. Yes. So let's switch to Bloodhound. And we're going to upload that. Let's look at our Inox user here. And it shows us there's a reachable high value target. Well, this is because we can pierce remote into a DC, which is unusual in a normal scenario. But let's see what this user can actually do. One thing to always check here are outbound control rights. And actually, if we click on group delegated object control here, we can see that we can read the GMSA password of the Apache service user. And let's have a look here at Bloodhound, um, how we're going to do that. Um, it's telling us it's a group managed service account and we can read the password. So it's a bit like labs, uh, if you know that one. Um, so let's see how we can abuse that. It's telling us to build this GitHub tool and uh, run it. Okay, but we're going to do it a bit differently. So there's this tool here, GMSA Dumper by Mika. It's doing a great job of retrieving um, these passwords remotely, but it doesn't take into account doing it locally. But we are going to modify the source um, of the tool a bit so we can also use it locally. And here's also a link, uh, which I'm going to put in the post as well, um, how to do it with PowerShell, but you need the DS internals um, PowerShell module, which we don't have on the box, so you would have to copy it over and so on. So let's go. First of all, we are going to query this attribute um, in which the password is stored. Um, we can do that without any special PowerShell modules, just the Active Directory module. And we got some information about the user and here you can see that this attribute is actually some byte array. Uh, it's just some blob here, right? And we have to decode that if we want to do something with it. So first of all, let's wrap that and just get the attribute um, because this way we get the full output and not just this um, truncated one here, right? And now we get this array here. Unfortunately, it prints them all separately with line breaks, so we have to make that a bit nicer. Just using Cyberchef here, which is replacing all line breaks with commas, and now it looks a bit better, right? So let's create our decoder here. So basically I just copied most of the code from the original and just removed some functionality down here that would handle the remote stuff, right? And now instead of doing it remotely, we just have to copy the array we just got inside here. Maybe as a brief explanation, this is just some um, definition of the structure for the data so we are able to pass it, right? And what we will get on the end is an NTLM hash. So let's run it. And here we got the hash, and this is actually um, the NTLM hash of this service Apache user. So let's save that. And now we should be able to win our M with this hash. So let's try that. And this worked, this is great. Um, let's see which permissions we have. Any interesting groups? Not really. But there's one privilege here which really sticks out and this is the SE restore privilege, which is a pretty interesting one. So there's this great presentation here from Decoder, um, from the Donkeys team, um, from Hack in Paris. And he goes over all the privileges and gives some suggestions on how they can be exploited. So let's look for SE restore. Um, and it's telling us we are allowed to circumvent file and directory permissions when restoring backed up files and directories, which kind of makes sense. And this also includes registry keys. So this is really interesting. And the um, low level API calls that we have to do are create file and recreate X. This is basically um, all we have to know in a way because um, now it's getting interesting. We have to think about the registry key that would help us or a file that would help us to escalate privileges if we could write it anywhere on the system. 
There are some examples here. Um, you could uh, modify a service, place some DLL, overwrite service configs, which is pretty interesting. And that's it for the privilege, I guess. Then we have the SE backup privileges. Often SE restore and backup um, come together because um, usually these are assigned if you're on the backup operators group. But in this case, we just have the SE restore privilege, right? So the way I exploited this is I created the Visual Studio project um, and basically did what um, Decoder described in the slides, right? Um, first of all, there's a little code snippet here that activates the privilege in case we have it, but it's disabled. So that wouldn't be a problem. Um, in this case, let's check. It's actually enabled, so it isn't a problem for us, but it could be in other cases, right? And then we are going to use recreate key X A, but um, we are not really creating a new key. We are just getting a handle to an existing one. So that isn't a problem either. And the one we are getting is sec lock on. This is the key for the sec lock on service. And then we are going to write image path. And why this service? Well, that's one of the services a normal user is allowed to start. And if we overwrite the image path, which basically tells us where the executable of the service is on disk, we can execute arbitrary commands, right? So we get the handle, we set the image path with whatever command we want. That's just an argument to the program. And in the end, uh, we start the service. So this encoded thing is just um, get service uh, pipe start service. This is um, everything here. And I'm going to put that on GitHub just so you have some reference. So let's upload that. And the only thing left to do really for us here is to find a command that we like. So I'm just going to use some PowerShell reverse shell here. Um, the typical one-liner most of you probably use already. In order to use it on Windows in this form, we are going to base64 encode it. So first of all, we do encode text like this, and then base64. So this should be good. So let's run that. And we have to give it the command. So we are going to paste that shell here. And we're going to start it with cmd slash c to avoid problems later on. And for PowerShell, we're using exec bypass just in case um, the execution policy would prevent it otherwise. Let's run that. And that worked. We got a shell. Let's see what privileges we have. We are system. So should be able to get a flag here. Here we go, we got the flag. So that's it for the box. Thank you for watching. And in the future there will probably be a lot more Windows boxes on this channel. Um, also some binary exploitation. So stay tuned for that. If you liked the video, please subscribe, click the like button and see you next time.